This week's video is brought to you by the Gaming Deal of the Week. This week, get the Crisis Maximum Edition, a three game pack for under $10. Check out the link in the description below. Good morning, everybody. August 16th, 6 a.m. here in America. Hope everybody's up bright and sunny. I am. Got something really good for you folks today. What am I talking about? What's well, the new highly anticipated launch of the GeForce GTX 660 Ti? Now, this is supposed to be the mid ring contender and knock out many cards by the competition over at AMD at the same price point. Now, today, the car we're going to be looking at right off the bat is the brand new car from the people over at ASUS. This is their version, it's the Direct C. CU2 top version, comes overclocked right out of the box, has superior cooling, and is totally based on a non-reference design. So with that said, let's jump in, let's check out the features of this card, the benchmarks, and at the end of the day, whether it's worth your dollar to purchase. Let's go. Now, folks, this isn't going to be your traditional unboxing because the card sample that we received was an early marketing sample and may not be the exact same thing you see on your retail shelf, so I didn't want to misguide you, but it will contain most of the essentials that you'll need to get up and going. First, we see the speed setup package. Then we see the two Molex to six pin connectors, the DVI to VGA connector, and obviously the card itself. Now, retail box contents may differ ever so slightly, but these are the essentials you will receive for sure in the box. The ASUS GeForce GTX 660 Ti top is based off a totally non-reference design and has features like no other card in its class. Let's start out by taking a look at the physical aspects of the card. First off is the DirectCU2 cooling. This cooling offers 20% better cooling and 5% lower audible noise than standard reference cards. The DCU2 card also features 5 dissipation points that offer 125% larger dissipation area and optimized heat sinks made from high quality aluminum. Having the heat pipes in direct contact with the GPU is a key element in the RecCU line of cards. This allows direct contact with the cooler and better dissipation of the heat from the card. The card requires two 6-pin power connectors and uses 134 watts of power under non-TDB situations. There are two SLI fingers, and the GTX 660 Ti line can be used in triple SLI configuration. Sorry folks, no quad SLI here. Now, as far as some of the components that make the car just run especially good and great for overclocking are their Digi Plus VRM and Super Alloy Power. These are the key technical differences in the ASUS card versus the reference card, as the DCU2 card features a Super Alloy Choke, Super Alloy Capacitor. Super Alloy MOS and SAP cap that when combined with the DigiPlus VRM offer a 30% reduction in power noise. These two features are very important to how well the ASUS GTX 660 Ti will scale in overclocking as well. Now there are some technical features of all GTX 660 Ti cards that remain the same. They all share the same 1344 CUDA cords and 7 SMX units, as well as a 192-bit memory controller and 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. The core clock of the reference-based cards are 950 MHz with a boost clock of 980 MHz, but the ASUS DirectCU2 top card comes out of the box with a core clock of 1059 MHz and a boost clock of 1130 MHz. And with overclocking, you can push this even further. The memory speed of the ASUS card is 6,008 MHz for a total overall effective bandwidth of 144.2 GB a second. All overclocking now comes from the boost, unlike previous generation cards, and the better cooling electronics of this card will allow better overclocking results. GPU Tweak is the brainchild of ASUS and is a very good tool for monitoring and adjusting your card settings. It is recommended to set the power to 123% for better overclocking efficiency, and this tool comes included on the driver CDD that came right in the box. Now let's jump to the rear I.O. The rear I.O. features two dual-link DVI connections, a standard display port, and a standard HDMI port. So now that we've seen how the card looks and we've seen all its features, let's get ready to rock and check out the performance benchmarks.
All right, so there you folks have it. Now, this particular card is going to be coming to market at about $329, but some of the cool things are is that for surround monitors, you can use the four monitors right off their I.O. directly. And one exciting thing about this is they are really putting a lot of effort into their new tessellation and adapted V-Sync features. There's new games coming out, and if you're lucky enough to find an online e-tailer is providing it, you can get the new game Borderlands 2 with a coupon code. So look around. You guys are want to check this out. So this card never really got hot over 65 Celsius. It ran pretty decently. The scores are very well up there in the contenders, and this is actually the fastest of the batch of cards that we tested right here on launch day. Now, there are rumors, though, out there that the Zotac card is supposed to be a speed king, but I haven't seen that card as yet. So at the end of the day, I got to say, the new Asus version, their Direct CU2 top card is a serious editor's choice here on Motherboards.org. See you guys here on Motherboards.org later today.